Hello, it is Thursday, June 29th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Thursday puzzle today, which means we're going to have some sort of ambitious theme. And I particularly enjoy that. I have to say this might be my favorite, favorite day of the solving week. And this um, favorite ambitiously themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Camtron, Henrik Koskinen, David Innes, and as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the indomitable Shoalmaster, and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the six of them, benefactors of the Daily Self Patreon campaign. They are generously supporting this channel and sustaining this series, and for that, I'm incredibly grateful. So thank you to them, and thank you to everybody who is a patron. Thank you if you've contributed to this, uh, keep this series going. I really do appreciate it. And if you'd like to consider doing so yourself, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. And of course, there you can find all of the bonus videos available to patrons and as a benefactor, also the Daily Self Let's Check the Crosses mug. All right. Uh, do also subscribe to the channel on YouTube. That's a big help. I'd appreciate it if you'd um, consider subscribing. And then there's also the Daily Self Discord chat server, which you can join via a link in the description field as well. And that is a nice, friendly chat community. So check it out. All right. All that said, let's get on to today's crossword. This is by Simeon Siegel, a Thursday-themed crossword, about half a dozen to Simeon Siegel's name, so a fairly experienced constructor, and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. I can see some circled cells, and they seem unusually circled. Uh, they seem differently circled than, than how they typically are. So let's start solving and see what's going on there. Right, we have a sort of double outlined circled cell. Okay, anyway, we'll see, we'll see what that means eventually runs through demos or tries or something. I don't know. European capital that uses the Cyrillic alphabet. Well, it's not Moscow. It's not Kiev. It's, uh, Sofia, Bulgaria, maybe runs through Minsk. Belarus. I don't, I could be embarrassing myself in terms of, I know that not all Slavic languages use the Cyrillic alphabet. So I could be misattributing. <laughs> I apologize if I'm making any linguistic errors. Anyway, we'll just have to see. Clubby order for short is a, a BLT, maybe a club sandwich. I'm not sure if that's actually what we're looking for here. Demi blank, Victoria's secret offering. Demi bra. Um, particular article of lingerie, and then old-time poker. Old-time poker. Is this referring to the game, or is this referring to something, you know, maybe a poker for a, a fire, something like that? Oh, no, maybe neither of those. Maybe it's a lance, an old-time weapon with which you could poke somebody. I mean, that's a bit of a euphemism, I think, relative to the violence that would occur if you, if you struck someone with a lance. But anyway, uh, it's an old-time poker, maybe. Let's see if that fits. They do betters one better. So something dealing with people betting in a gambling context. They do betters one better. I'm not quite sure. It probably ends with an S. One-sixth of the world's ground surface until 1991 in brief, the USSR. That sounds correct to me. Um, before its dissolution. And then uh, Heavenly Messengers in Madrid. So this is uh, angels in Spanish. Uh, angelos. Or is it? It just occurred to me because Los Angeles is the city of angels. It must be spelled this way. Angelus or Angeles. Angel oh, boy, I need, to, I need to improve my Spanish pronunciation. <laughs> anyway, we pronounce the city Los Angeles but I assume that is a horrific bastardization of the Spanish pronunciation. In any case, there we go, angels in Spanish. Energy, en energy industry transport. A, a, a Kohler? Is that something? A sort of... I don't know. I don't know if that's actually a word. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Feature of the flags of Lebanon and Belize. Oh boy, what? Uh, um, boy, I'm, 
wonder if this will be clear to me in retrospect when I see it. I don't know. Measure roughly equivalent to a burning match. Is that a BTU, a British thermal unit? I think that's that sounds about right to me. So does that help? Oh, tree. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's funny. I wouldn't I wouldn't have been able to bring that to mind without the crosses. Energy industry transport. Okay, still not sure. Garment providing lower back support during pregnancy. Garment. Um, garment. Do better is one better. Captain's emergency quarters. And crossbreeds smaller than tigers. Are they... So, oh, sorry, smaller than ligers. So a liger is a lion tiger. Tigons are tiger lions, I suppose. And they're smaller than ligers. That's interesting. I wonder which is the, um, which provides the sort of smaller genes. So I don't remember enough about genetics to know which then sort of which direction they would be bred to provide the dominant, the sort of more relevant genes. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, they, they do betters one bet. Oh, raisers. If you're raising a bet at a betting table, that sounds correct to me. Captain's emergency quarters. What is that? See something? Boy, that would look, that would really make this look like collar. I really, this is an awkward sounding word, I have to say. But it could, it could very well be correct. I mean, it being a slightly awkward sounding word has nothing to do with whether it's, whether it's correct or legitimate. Captain's emergency quarters. See I don't know. I mean, the C bit is obvious, but I don't know what, I just don't know what the rest of it is. Okay, period of concealed development. Also occurs to me, I don't know what's going on with these circled letters. Does this one mean anything yet? Or do I need other circled letters in order for it to have any meaning? I'm not sure. Okay, period of concealed development. Uh, could it be something like a, like a, I don't know, sort of fetal stage or a larval stage or something. I, I'm not really sure what this is looking for. Yeah, I just don't know. First name in Pilsners. Is Amstel? I think Amstel is a pig Pilsner. That could be. Uh, what are some other Pilsners that might be six letters long? Let's try, oops, let's try that one and see. Uh, Pilsner, the, the beer uh, category. Camera with an optical viewfinder in brief. Okay, maybe this is wrong. Um, SLR, single lens reflex camera. Members of the genus Apis. Well, those are bees. Um, it's easy to remember because of words like apiary. Runs through. Oh, stabs. You run someone through with a sword. You stab them. Okay, I was completely on the wrong. I was thinking of sort of run through this demonstration. And of course, I'm sure that was an intentional bit of misdirection. Okay. Uh, Egyptian capital could could be Sophia still, could be something else. Uh, network where impractical jokers originated. I don't know what that is. Um, director Lee Ong Lee is a film director. First name in Pilsner. Oh, Stella Artois. Okay, there we go. Um, members of the genus... Vespa. Members of the genus, oh no, oh sorry, member. Did I say members? Member of the genus Vespa. Do I know this? I don't know. It doesn't, I don't immediately, can't immediately bring it to mind. Asylum seeker maybe could be a refugee. Um, okay, right. I was wondering if maybe the network would start with the, but it looks like it does not. So yeah, I don't know what it is. Okay, I'm going to say this is going to be Sofia, Bulgaria. Here we go. Egyptian capital that uses the Cyrillic alphabet. Okay, there we go. Oh, and I just, <laughs> I just realized, I wonder if we're meant to be slightly misdirected by thinking of capital, meaning a capital letter. I, that never even occurred to me. I only ever thought of this as referring to a European city, capital city, but that might have been, maybe that wasn't misdirection, but just a bit of little clever uh, sort of, I don't know, synergy with the, the rest of the clue. In any case. Uh, oh, Hornet. Oh, Hornet. I don't know why, but that sounds 
appropriate to me, a Vespa Hornet. I mean, maybe maybe I, I had learned that at some point and it was in the deep recesses of my mind, definitely not part of my active knowledge. So network, I, yeah, I do not know the trust, try, you know, catch in a way. And notorious initials, notorious. This could be referring to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, notorious RBG named sort of in similar uh, method, you know, similar style to the notorious BIG. Um, I think that might be the answer. The um, late Supreme Court Justice. Grubbs E.G. Bait, maybe? In a, in a fishing context or something? And catch in a way... Oh, here. I, I didn't catch that. I didn't hear that. All right. Okay, good. Another bit of slight misdirection there, I think. Serious could be a grave error, a serious error. So this is true TV. Okay. So that's a television network, I guess. And then Oscar-winning director Kazan, Elia Kazan, of On the Waterfront, etc. Patagonian Prairie. Uh... Is it Lano or am I thinking of Lano or Las? No, Lano is what I'm thinking of. Is a is a particular kind of plane, um, and don't ask me to exactly define what sort of plane it is. It's just one of those you know words I know from having encountered it enough times to launch it in my brain. Um, so I think that's the answer. Okay, reacted purposefully when handed the ball. Ran. or something when handed the ball ran. I'm not sure if this is meaning literally a ball in a kind of sporting context, or if it is metaphorical, if it's a metaphorical usage, meaning, I don't know, in a business context or something, you're handed the ball and you ran it home. When I just said it that way, it sort of popped into my head. I don't know if that's actually a phrase. <laughs> It sort of sounds like it's maybe correct to me, but I'm not I'm not actually sure. So let's check the crosses. Sweet talk, maybe. No, I don't think that's right. Sweet because sweet talk looks more like woo or something like that. Ran. Oh, this doesn't look very good either, though. Any Simpsons character. Oh well, a tune, a cartoon. And then period of concealed development. Late. I don't know. And I'm still not seeing anything useful about these circles. They don't seem to be necessary to deal with any of their crossing answers. And they don't really seem like they spell anything. There are no vowels here yet. I don't know. I really don't know. I'd be curious to see what's, what it's all about. French clog and the root of an English word meaning disrupt. I want to say sabbat. Oh, d sabotage, disrupt, right, there we go. Oh, interesting, okay. I never connected the French sort of clog, the French footwear with the root of the word sabotage. I wonder what the etymology is there. Why are those, are these, I mean, this clue suggests they are actually connected. It isn't, it isn't sort of coincidental because this specifically refers to it as the root of an English word meaning disrupt. That's really interesting. I wonder what I wonder what the etymology is there. Okay, well, let's keep looking around. Start running now. If you say three, two, one, but that's not enough. Uh, I mean, this must be right because it works with sabotage. Thomas Hardy title character Tess of the Dubervilles. Tess of Tess of the Dubervilles. Uh, what many beachgoers do, they bask or they bake? I don't really think that's right. Yeah, what do they do? Not sure. Okay, the garment providing lower back support. Oh, belly something, maybe? I don't know. Still not sure about this period of concealed development. Not seeing it. Start running now. What many beachgoers do. Oh, right. Here we go. Sharing in a symbol of commitment or what four rows in this puzzle 
are doing to form new phrases. Uh, oh no, what am I missing? Sharing in a symbol of commit. It's something to do with rings, maybe? Because these, these could be representing rings. They, they look like rings with the double, double outline there. Uh, sharing in a symbol of commitment. Something ing rings? Trading rings or exchanging rings? Oops. Oh, maybe it is exchanging rings. Oh, wait, oh, hold on. So do we exchange these? Horse trainers. Wow, right, look at that. Okay, so in this first one, we, we exchange the letters and the rings, the S and the N, and then that creates a fully, um, a kind of fully realized phrase spanning this whole row. So we're led with we're, we're we're left with horse trainers. Wow, that's really impressive. And then the second one, we trade these and we have travel agents, right? Okay, there we go. So oh, latent period of concealed development. So a latent sort of latent development. It's concealed. It's not it's it's not obvious. Okay, it's happening kind of latently. Okay, well we don't have anything else yet because we've not gotten to that bit of the grid. Uh, but that oh, very pleased about that. Boy, I, I absolutely did not did not occur to me to swap those around. I uh, wonder, wonder how many people got this without the revealer. Okay, secure as an interview. You could land an interview for a job, say. Creator of U.S. flood maps. FEMA, maybe? The, um, the Federal Emergency uh, Agency? A sheath of connective tissue. Fascia? Not sure if that's right. Free to pursue other opportunities dysphemistically. Dysphemistically. Dysphemistically, what is that saying? Free to pursue other opportunities. X something? This looks like a counterpart to the word euphemistically. Dysphemistically, euphemistically. What is the, what's the distinction between those? I assume what this means is that it's going to be a word that you, oh, axed, as in, I, I was axed from the job. I'm free to pursue other opportunities, you could say, dysphemistically, and I need to know what that means that specifically distinguishes it from euphemistically. All right. Well, this could, maybe it is fascia. Heap of junk, a scrap, I was going to say scrap heap, that's not going to repeat a bit of the clue from the, um, in the answer, so scrap pile, maybe? Let's, let's put it in and see if it works. Borax, for one. Uh, some sort of abrasive agent or a uh, chem... Is it just a chemical? Sorry, it didn't even occur to me to try such a, such a straightforward thing. Um, maybe. Let's see. That seems really broad. America's first vice, so to speak. Uh, John Adams, first vice president. So this is phrased as though it's referring to America's first, uh, you know, sort of sin or something, advice in that sense. But no, nope, first vice president. Lend a hand, pitch in. And explicit, something's explicit, it's stated, it's not left, it's not left implicit. Vehicle with the spotlight and municipal plates, most likely. A cop car, I guess? Uh, I suppose, yeah, in terms of having a spotlight and municipal plates, that's likely. Mexican beach resort informally Cabo, Cabo San, Lu San Lucas. And pilots are aviators. No. Oh, <laughs> pilots aviates, right. So pilots could be a noun or a verb. You could say, look at those pilots. Um, each one of them aviates. Each one of them pilots. Look at those pilots. Each one of them aviates. Pilots. All right. Poet whose Latin name re relates to sheep. Ovid. I've always, that's always sort of struck me <laughs> that Ovid's name is uh, sort of ovine in nature. It sounds like it relates to sheep. I wonder if it actually does. So this uh, Again, sort of similarly to this uh, bit about the root of an English word meaning disrupt. 
this this is claiming his name does relate to sheep and not that it just sort of sounds as though it does. So now I'm curious about two, <laughs> two etymological kind of details in this puzzle. Provides lodging for billets. That's that's a, a, a not used very often, I would say, in the modern era, but billet, someone provide lodging for them. Birthplace of Zeus in Greek myth, Crete. Uh, the island of Crete, and then digs in the winter. A den? Oh, for a, for a for an animal. So a bear, for instance, could hibernate in in a den in the winter. There we go. So the digs, the home, and then ID since the Great Depression, a social security number, um, you know, introduced during in in the uh, Roosevelt era reforms, and then. You don't say, gosh. Um, SSN, by the way, if, if you not don't have a U.S. cultural context, it's a um, uniquely it's a unique personal identification number that's associated with the Social Security system of the United States. Okay, tittle is a bit of a tittle, a bit of a. I don't know. I can't see it. Luminance is a shine, maybe. Not certain. There might be other possibilities. So let's look at the, the crosses. So, oh, right. Here we go. Reacted perfectly. Reacted, re, sorry, reacted purposefully when handed the ball. This still could end with in. Oh, ran. No, no, it doesn't. Ran with it. You were handed the ball and you ran with it. There we go. This is a dot. A tittle. A dot. Okay. Is that a word for a dot that is just new to me? It must be. I'll have to look that up. I'm not, I'm not, not sure. Sweet talk, maybe it is woo, my, my first instinct. And a big baddie is an ogre, right? So this is not shine. Oops. It is luminance. Sh she oh, sheen. Yes, okay. There we go. That's 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 perfectly plausible. This uh, object has a bit of a luminance, a bit of a sheen. And to facilitate is to... I feel as though this is right on the tip of my tongue and I can't think what it is. Game of catch. Game of catch. Does it is is this somehow referring to a game animal that is caught somehow? I'm not sure. Oh no, 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 it's not. It's referring to a game in which you catch people, tag. A game you, you try and run after someone and tag them, catch them essentially. Facilitate, enact, or enable. You could ah, yes, okay. You could facilitate this decision, you could enable it. Equipment is gear. Very tight squeeze is a bear hug. So not a tight squeeze as in squeezing through a space, but rather somebody giving you a squeeze. Cat vis-a-vis -vis milk is a, a lapper, I suppose. I, this must be the answer. A cat does lap up milk. So vis-a-vis -vis milk, a cat is a lapper. Oh, right. And that means we can look at this uh, thematic answer. We have ballet slipper. There we go. Very good. This is very, very clever. Uh, well done to the constructor. Letters of interest. An APB, an all points bulletin, which a law enforcement agency might issue to indicate we're searching for this person uh, over a very broad area. So bulletin is going out to all points. Slip. Um, an error. Um, and maybe this isn't. Oh, no, it's not that. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so no, I was totally wrong. I mean, I suppose you can make an argument for my interpretation, but this is a much better answer. APR, annual percentage rate. So this is referring to interest in the sense of financial interest earned. So you know, how much, what is the rate of interest you will earn over a year, the annual percentage rate? A slip is an error, a mistake. And Blank Productions Media Company, Harpo. So this is Oprah Winfrey's production company, of course, her uh, first name backwards. Pigment made from iron ore is ochre. Is ochre made from iron ore? That sounds plausible. Organization supporting the Lovings in the 1967 Supreme Court case, Loving versus Virginia. This was dealing with interracial marriage, I believe. And at the ACLU, it makes sense that it would support the couple in question. Fail to articulate in a way um, to 
slur your words, to fail to articulate clearly. I think that's that's likely. Port Tower. Port Tower. What does that mean? I'm not quite sure I see it. Phasmobix fear, a ghost if you're if you fear phantoms. Oh, a tug. It's not a port tower. It's a port tower. Boy, that, that was clearly intentional <laughs> misdirection. And I was successfully misdirected. So you could have something that tows in a port. So a, a tugboat tows other ships in a port. There we go. Very clever. Was clear as a bell rang. The bell rang. It was clear. It rang. Odd fellows informally... Um, I am not immediately sure. And the captain's emergency quarters are the C... A seat, maybe? No, C... Oh, I do not know. Just do not know. And the garment com providing lower back support during pregnancy is a... Bell's... Bane bone? I, I don't know. Uh, start running now. On go. Right, okay. Oh, and we never looked at this. Pitch pitch in and ghost, they swap around to hitching post. Right, okay, where you might tie up a horse or something, I guess, in a kind of, I don't know, Old West scenario. Odd fellows informally are, oh, randos. Oh, right, okay. Sort of random, you know, some, some random person you don't know who suddenly uh, makes themselves uh, involved in your situation. Government providing lower back support during pregnancy. Uh, Bell's band? I, I'm worried I have something wrong here. Maybe this isn't Kohler. Energy industry trend. Sorry if this is like unbelievably obvious to you. Um, what many beachgoers do, they... I want this to be banned. What do many beachgoers do? I am not seeing this captain's emergency. This is this is ridiculous. I'm basically at the end here. Uh, oh, oh. Why did I think the period of concealed development was latent? Why did I put that? That's completely obviously incorrect. It's a period. It's singular. It's a latency. It's the it's the noun form of latent, the adjective. Why that was that was incredibly obviously wrong. Okay. Oh, a sea cabin. That again, that makes this so much easier. I guess this probably is Kohler then. So belly band. Okay, belt that ah, I don't know how I made that mistake. <laughs> Really did not do me any favors whatsoever. So what do beachgoers do? They, they bane? That doesn't make any sense. This is Tess. C. No, it's obviously not bane. Uh, on go. Start running now. Okay, go. Okay. I really got in my own way today, didn't I? <laughs> Between this latency, latency thing, uh, on go, okay go, um, I suppose it was that was really the main thing, and then everything else flowed from that. So I didn't get sea cabin, I didn't get belly band, I didn't get bake, I didn't get uh, well, okay go was the problem. Um, yeah, that that absolutely made this a much much tougher corner of the puzzle. That it needed to be. That was that was horrible. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that was that was my fault because latency is not. There's no reason I shouldn't have got to latency given I basically had the correct word in. I, w I was in the same sort of root correct word anyway. Uh, anyway, there we have it. That was the Thursday puzzle. Really nice theme here. Uh, it was one of those. <laughs> it was one of those themes that. Um, feels completely baffling, but you don't need to do anything about it in order to solve the puzzle. So I was able to just keep marching past these answers, not understanding in any way what was going on with the theme. It wasn't stopping me from solving the puzzle, but it didn't, 
I just had no clue what was going on. And then we get exchanging rings. And of course, it all slots into place. So Hornet Razors becomes Horse Trainers. Grave Latency becomes Travel Agency. Um, pitching, uh, pitch In Ghost becomes Hitching Post. And finally, Billet's Lapper becomes uh, Ballet Slipper. It's almost like a, a spoonerism, but but doesn't work quite the same way. That has more to do with the uh, starting, swapping the starting consonants of uh, of words. There must be, I mean, there must be a term for this. It's the sort of thing that you'd think would. Oh, I guess some of them were the it did involve the the opening consonants, but not um, but not both in the case of this. Anyway, um, I wonder if there's a word for this. Maybe not, because there's no consistency in terms of which syllable or letter or sound we're, we're swapping around. So maybe maybe this is too general an operation to have a specific name. I don't know. Let me know if you're aware of a, of a term for this sort of linguistic uh, little game. Anyway, that was the Thursday Puzzle by Simeon Siegel. I really enjoyed that. Hope you did as well. Hopefully you didn't get in your own way as much as I did in mine. And I, I don't, I'm not going to put on the privacy veil and do the sort of full clues from yesterday's puzzle because I don't, at least at the moment that I searched, I didn't see any sort of corrections that needed to be made. But there were two comments about common words. Uh, Skiff1766 says, I'm beginning to think TSA is used more frequently as an answer than Allo or Oreo. And it does seem to be the case recently, doesn't it? I mean, certainly in total, I think Allo and Oreo have both been, have each been used considerably more than TSA. But TSA is absolutely on the up. It's been used frequently, quite quite a bit recently. Uh, I don't know why I said frequently quite a bit. Those mean the same thing. In any case, uh, and um, we have another clue along, uh, another comment along similar lines from Chorl, who says, "May Jemison may be the official astronaut." of the New York Times crossword. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think we have an official federal agency of the New York Times crossword and an official astronaut of the New York Times crossword. So there we go. Two more for the the ever-increasing list of official concepts. And, uh, and that's that for today's video, the Thursday crossword. I'll be back tomorrow, of course, for the Friday puzzle. No theme, just solving clues. Hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm-hmm.